Hi guys, so we are going to go ahead and get our very first flip video started off with our biochemistry unit on macromolecules. I'm actually going to divide this PowerPoint into two separate videos, and so you are going to be needing to take some C notes. So remember to take C notes, you draw that, draw that off-centered eye on your paper, and you only need to do the summary at the end. Feel free to draw pictures, pause the video as much as you like. For this, the, um, for the macromolecules that we're going to talk about for everyone, I really want you to focus on what the macromolecule is, what its overall function, what the monomer is, what a polymer of it looks like, and then, of course, examples and the structure. So let's begin with organic chemistry. We know what a compound requires to be organic. In seventh grade, you know that any molecule or compound that has carbon and hydrogen are classified as organic. So what does the term macromolecule mean? Well, macro, the prefix macro in Latin means large. So macromolecules are extremely large molecules and they do fall into the organic compound because every single macromolecule that we're going to talk about is made up of carbon and hydrogen. So let's talk about carbon. Remember that carbon is found in group 14 on the periodic table, and therefore it has four valence electrons, which are the electrons in the outer energy level. So therefore carbon wants to make four covalent bonds to be happy. Every atom wants to have um, a full outer energy level. So carbon normally will bond with hydrogen, another carbon atom, oxygen, or nitrogen to help uh, fulfill its outer energy requirements to make it happy and be neutral. So an example of a carbon molecule would be methane, which is CH4. One carbon molecule is making four bonds with hydrogen, and because hydrogen is in group one, hydrogen itself also only wants to make one bond. So remember in eighth grade how we did talk about the valence electrons and making atoms happy. It's all about how many valence electrons they have, and not just making one element happy, but both have to be satisfied to make that compound. So when we talk about macromolecules, like we said, macro means large, so we're going to talk about large organic molecules. These are also called polymers. Poly, the prefix in Latin, means many. So when we talk about macromolecules or a polymer, we have to talk about what makes up these large molecules. Why are they so big? What makes up these many different things together? And the answer to that is a monomer. Monomer, the prefix mono, means one in Latin. It is like one unit. It's the building block of what makes up these polymers. So, for example, if we wanted to um, talk about, a, let's see, a cell. One cell, and then you take a bunch of cells together, that makes up tissue. So a tissue could be like a polymer. It's made up of the same thing again and again and again. The four macromolecules that we're going to be talking about through this PRBL are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids that can be found in DNA and RNA. This flip video, we're only going to focus on one and two, carbohydrates and lipids. So remember, for each one, you want to know what the monomer is, the polymer, the function, and the examples along with the structure. So how are macromolecules formed? Well, the answer is dehydration synthesis. Now, it could also be called a concentrated reaction, but when you think of dehydration, you think of water coming out of a solution. So this is a little different because this is a big misconception. When you actually are combining a bunch of monomers together, they form a polymer by removing water. So water is actually made in this type of chemical reaction. So when we say dehydration synthesis, it means water is being removed from the compound, but it's making it as another product. So water isn't being absorbed, it's being released. So it's a little backwards how you would think. So example, let's just pretend these you know, nice little rectangles are a monomer. They're all the same color, they're all the same size, and so it's bunches of monomers together. Well, there's an OH, 
compound on one and just a hydrogen on the other. So when this monomer wants to add to this polymer, you're going to have an H and an HO, which are going to bond together and make H2O and then allow all three monomers to come together. So this is a polymer. This would be a polymer because it's made up of many monomers. So this is what dehydration synthesis is. This is how these macromolecules form. They add together and water is released from the um, reaction. It's a byproduct. How are macromolecules separated or digested? Well, it's the exact opposite. If you are making water when you are adding them together, what do you think you have to have if you want to break these polymers apart into monomers again? Well, it's the exact opposite. This is called hydrolysis. Hydro, again, means water. So to separate monomers, you have to add water. So if I had this one big polymer again, and I want to separate this monomer out, I can add water to this chemical reaction, and it will work just as it did before. It will break this bond, and a hydrogen will go on one, and the OH will go on the other. So to make a polymer, you also are going to have water as a byproduct. To make monomers by separating a polymer, you have to add water. So really take a second and think about that because that can be extremely confusing. Dehydration, water is coming out. Hydrolysis, water is going in. So let's get to our first macromolecule, which is carbohydrates. You're all very familiar with the term. However, a carbohydrate is probably not exactly what you think of when you're thinking of food. A carbohydrate is actually a small sugar molecule, a bunch of small sugar molecules that are adding up to one big large macromolecule. The main function of carbohydrates is energy storage or structural support. We know, oh, if you're going to go for a big run or a marathon, the night before you want to eat a lot of carbs. You want to stack up on that baked potato. You want to eat that pasta. You want to store that energy so the following day when your body is in high demand, it's ready to be broken down. Examples of monomers for carbohydrates are monosaccharide, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. These are different examples of carbohydrates. And if you've all noticed, they all have the uh, same ending, saccharide, which means sugar. Carbohydrates are sugars. So let's talk about what a monosaccharide is. A monosaccharide is the monomer of a carbohydrate. So that's very important. Make sure you're writing that down. What is a monomer of a carbohydrate? It is a monosaccharide, which is one simple sugar unit. And a great example would be glucose. We all are very familiar with glucose. It has a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So, of course, it is organic because it does have the carbon and hydrogen. And if we were to reduce this chemical formula down, it would be 1 to 1. Starch is also an example of a carbohydrate. Fructose is an example. Galactose, cellulose, these are all different. Cellulose is found in plants. Mainly, I mean, glucose is found as plants as well, but it's also found in animals. Here is a 3D model of what a, car, a simple monosaccharide can look like. And then here's it written with a chemical formula creating a tetra ring. Notice it is the carbons that are linked together to create with one oxygen and a double bond in the middle. And then everything else kind of branches off of that. And, uh, Chitin. Some people say chitin. It just prefer, uh, depends on how you would like to pronounce it, which is also very common in um, exoskeletons like shrimp and ants and insects and things like that. So glucose is our main monosaccharide. So let's talk about what a disaccharide is. Well, di means two. So obviously a disaccharide is going to be when you combine two different or the same sugar molecules together. Sucrose, we've all heard of sucrose, is actually when you take a glucose and a fructose together. Lactose, what's in milk, when some people have um, issues with and digestion, is uh, glucose with galactose. And malutose, which is just two glucose molecules together. So a disaccharide is on the way to being a larger unit. It's more, made of two. So again, we have our 3D structure as well as how it could be written out on paper. 
So when these two sugar molecules combined, water was created in a dehydration synthesis. And so the last carbohydrate we're going to talk about is polysaccharide. Again, the prefix poly means many, so this is just many sugar units together, anything over two. Examples are starch, like your bread and your potatoes and your pasta. Also in animals, it can be um, glycan, which is found in the muscles. Cellulose, which is found in plants. You know, cellulose is what the cell wall of a membrane is made out of. It's found in corn, lettuce, celery. Uh, that's why cows have three stomachs. It is extremely hard to break cellulose down to digest it, and so they need three stomachs to do that. And so this is a polysaccharide. It's just many, many, many glucoses or different sugars that are linked together. Okay, so hopefully on carbohydrates, you understand the structure, you understand what the monomer is, and you know the function as well as examples. So now we're going to move into lipids. A lipid more commonly is known as a fat. So the definition of lipid, the general term, is a compound that is not soluble in water, means it will not break down, it will not dissolve, it will always separate itself. It's water hating or water fearing. All fats and lipids will never break down in water. Lipids are soluble and hydrophobic solvents, which means water fearing. Hydro means water and then phobic means fearing. There's a lot of vocabulary in this unit, which is why your word walls are extremely important. And lipids are made of, just like sugars, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, so they are organic. And they are for energy, sorry, um, but they are going to be the stored energy that you're going to use later. They're not going to, um, to be for that quick energy like a carbohydrate is. It's going to uh, provide more energy, but it's going to be one of the last results that it goes to. So examples of lipids are, of course, fats, phospholipids, oils, waxes, and even steroid hormones are considered lipids, and triglycerides, which we're going to talk about. So the main functions of a lipid, again, is that long-term energy storage. They also protect against heat and loss, like insulation, protection against physical shock, again, another insulation protection against water loss, and chemical messengers and hormones. These are all the functions that lipids are used in living organisms. And then the last one is they are definitely a major component in cell membranes, the biphospholipid layer. And we'll talk about that when we get into cells. So what is a triglyceride? A triglyceride is actually composed of two parts. Technically four, but two different parts. One glycerol and three fatty acids. So the glycerol is like the head, if you will. Notice how it is just a carbon skeleton with hydrogen and oxygen on the end. And then the fatty acids are going to be the tails. You've all heard that when you talk about fat, there's saturated and there's unsaturated. So we're going to talk about what that actually means. But this is called a triglyceride, tri meaning three, because it has one, two, three fatty acid chains. They can all be saturated. They could all be saturated. There could be a combination of either. But this is the glycerol, one glycerol unit and three fatty acid chains, which are like the tails. So let's talk about that fatty acid. There are two types. There is saturated and unsaturated. What it means to have a saturated fatty acid is that there is no double bonds. So if you look through this fatty acid chain, you can see it's a bunch of carbon atoms with hydrogens that's going to be coming off the end, and they're all single bond. The only double bond is between this oxygen, which a double bond in an oxygen is extremely common because oxygen is in that group that it needs for um, electrons. Unsaturated fats will have a double bond somewhere in there, as you can see right here. And in a fatty acid chain, it's going to kind of cause that kink. 
See how unsaturated has this little bend because of that double bond, where saturated is just nice and long and straight. In, uh, not just humans, but in life, saturated fats are really bad for you. They're very hard to break down and they're most likely just going to be stored as fat, where unsaturated fats are very beneficial. There are such things as good fats, and unsaturated is one of those. Coconut oil is a triglyceride of unsaturated fat. So is avocado. That's why it's so beneficial to our health. So let's actually look at a phospholipid. A phospholipid, like we said, kind of like the triglyceride, it does have that head, which is going to be the... Um, the phosphate, glycerol, and the other area combined. And then it's going to have your tail, which your tail is going to be um, the hydrophobic area, which is the fatty acids that hate water. Your head, which is hydrophilic, which means it loves water. So how does it help do this in a cell membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer, is they kind of create this sandwich look, as you'll see here. So water could be flowing all around here, and the heads of the phospholipid are going to be fine, where the tails that can't stand water and hate it and repel against it are protected from the hydrophilic loving layer. So this is what it could look like in a 3D model. Notice you have a unsaturated this one's unsaturated because it's got that bend to it and then a saturated fatty acid. And then steroids. Steroids are just like most of them. They do have a backbone of four carbons fused together in a ring, kind of like um, the glucose looks like, but four instead of six. And cholesterol and proglutarin um, are examples of steroids. Those are chemical messengers that we can use in our body. And so that's where we're going to stop. If you need to review or go back through, that's absolutely fine. Make sure you're drawing pictures so you understand the structure of the carbohydrates and the lipids, as well as the types and the monomer and the functions. And I'll see you all tomorrow.